Okay, hello class and welcome to our eighth lecture series on financial accounting or, or principles of accounting and I'm your instructor Jamal Haider. Okay, so we were talking about in our last lecture the date for our midterm. So on 5th of May there is holiday. So that day is already canceled. So we would, we would be having our midterm on 12th of May, right? So that is confirmed. Please, you know, go to your calendar and mark that date. So exactly on the same timing with the cl our class timing, we would be having our midterm and there is no excuse on that. Okay, I hope your family members and you are fine till that day. So please make sure your availability on 12th of May. Okay, and do take it seriously because the midterm consists of your overall assessment of 30%, which is a huge chunk. Regarding the paper pattern, we'll talk about at the end of this lecture. Let's finish our chapter four and that would be including, included in our midterm as well. So we were discussing the internal control and cash. So how we would how we would account for the cash in, in the balance in the balance sheet. So we talk about that cash is very sensitive, you know, account and also the item in, in a business. And we call this the cash is the blood for any organization. So since according to its sensitivity, it do have some kind of uh, you know, uh, embezzlement, fraud activity inside. So we talked about the internal control and we talked about with different perspective, risk assessment, how to control, you know, you know, uh, on, on, on our CAD. Today we'll further elaborate and we talk about the different categories over there as well. How we can have, you know, control over cash collection, you know, cash receipts, different kind of stuff. And then we talk about that there are motivations to do fraud. Uh, we call this fraud triangle, either through motivation, actualization, or realization. So, and then we talk about the bank reconciliation statement. So sometimes it doesn't mean that if cash is not equal to the bank side, so that doesn't mean that, that the accountant or cashier is or the manager is, is involved in fraudulent activity. So there are some general concerns and we talk about that whenever banks send you the statement, please make bank reconciliation statement, right? And in order to tally the bank side and the book side, so we talked about bank reconciliation statement. So from the bank side, what you have to adjust, deposits in transit. For example, you receive check from your customers and you deposit with the bank and it takes time to clear. We call this banks in transit. So you need to add on the bank side. On the book side, there are different stuff. For example, you authorize bank to collect on our behalf. So we don't know, customer directly go to the bank and submit. We only know when bank send us the bank summary or bank statement. Then we add on the book side. Similarly, if we did electronically funds transfer, this kind of stuff, we add or less. If we receive funds, we add. If we pay, then we'll less it. Similarly, we decrease service charges. We add the interest revenue. And this is non-sufficient funds. We add back. Why? Because we consider, if question is silent, we consider this non-sufficient firm is coming from our customer. So we need to make reverse entries. At first, when you receive this cash, you decreased its amount from your cash side, its, its, its account. You decrease that one. And then you are just, you make a reverse entry. Similarly, the cost of printing the check you already 
you will treat it as service charges with the bank. And also, since we are not reboot, even the bank summary is also made by computer, but directed by the humans. So human can also make error. And also on your company plot, you can also make error. Beside that, if there is a huge amount of difference, so if there's a $10 or $100 difference, that can be a fraud, it can maybe or may not, you can ignore that one. But if there's a discrepancy of like 1,000 or 100,000 or 200,000, then there is a red signal that this can be a case of fraud, right? And then you have audit, different type of like stuff. You ask your managers from other departments to recheck, double check, and then you finally file a case or whatsoever according to your, your policy. Either you file or either you apply case, uh, police case or whatsoever, right? Because it depends on amount as well. If $1 million, of course, the, the company will not give you any, rel any relaxation. It will file a lawsuit against you. Okay. And now, Okay, our fourth learning objective, which is evaluate internal controls over cash receipts and cash payments. So, okay, let's talk about that. So, cash requires specific internal controls because since it's cash, right, it's not in your, you know, bank account, even if it's in bank account, Somebody can forge the signature and can take out the money, right? Plus, if the cash is inside company's vault, then cash is easy to steal, right? You cannot put all of your cash, 100% cash, in your bank account. You still need some cash. We call this petty cash for day-to-day -day business transaction. For example, a customer can, you know, can come. You can offer some refreshments. For example, water charges, right? You bought, you know, mineral water, you know, bottles and, you know, the air cooler stuff, some tea, this kind of, you know, expenses. So that petty cash should be in, uh, in, 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 in companies, you know, drawers or war. So it's easily, you know, available and it can be stolen easily as well. So remember, all transactions ultimately affect cash. Think of any transaction, it will be ultimately indirectly or directly affecting the cash. So that's why it is very sensitive account. Cash receipts should be deposited quickly. If you are eligible to receive cash, then make sure that it is deposited into the bank as soon as possible, right? Because then fraud triangle, it activated either through motive, through realization or whatsoever, right? So let's talk about the cash reception. So cash can be received over the counter or through mail. You have like given facility to your customer, either you can deposit to the bank or deposit to the company cashier you know, place over there, or you can just put the cash in a mailbox over there, right? So when the cash are received over the counter, so it means there is a point of sale terminal. So when point of sale terminal is there, so it provides control over cash received. Like you go to the Carrefour, Tesco, Vanguard, right? So whenever they enter, they receive some cash from you, the tray opens. So you cannot open the tray, you know, you cannot open that unless the manager would give his password. So as soon as you like turn on the scanner, then the, the system, it's a very smart system, it automatically recognizes that, so you are having, uh, 
you know, scanning the barcode and there must be a customer and he gave you some amount and that's why the tray is open, right? So you, but there are still the chances you can do some random clicks and you can open the tray. But as soon as the tray is open, the special check that you open, for example, the customer gave you 100 yuan. So as soon as you, you know, touch that 100 yuan, you know, space over there, so in in cash counter in in point of sale terminal that uh, there would be a mark that you touched 100 yuan place over there drawer inside the drawer there is some, some space of 100 yuan 10 yuan 50 yuan 20 yuan right so this this also provides an external control that okay the the person who is handling cash over there he touched this section for like three times four times and there's a camera and you can see that whether the customer gave you you guys 10 yuan and you are touching 100 yuan, so it means there is some kind of like fishy going on. And the camera can confirm that whether it's, it's like a human error or it's like, you know, they deliberately manipulating the stuff. So plus at the end of the day, you tally your sales with the cash. The point of sale will tell you that, okay, today the sale was 100,000 yuan and the cash inside that part of sale terminal is also 100,000. 100, so it tallies, so it means it provides uh, control over cash as well. So you see it records sales, cost of items, and reduction in inventory. So point of sale gives you three, three checks. It records the sales. When the sales are recorded, then these two accounts are hit. Cost of sales goes to expense, and re reduction in inventory, it will go to the balance sheet. So customer issued a receipt as proof of purchase. Obviously you give receipt to the customer. So sale associate turns in cash drawer at the end of the shift combined with other cash and deposits. Accounting department reconciles sales per terminal to cash in drawer. Right at the end of the day, when you hand over all the drawer or cash, the accounting department, the manager will come and write it down, okay, this is the next shift. And the first shift, the total sales tally with the, uh, uh, 